Uh, hi, so uh, our project is the iPhone uh, cataract diagnosis and uh, basically it's meant as a way of doing first level screening in developing nations where uh, they don't have trained professionals uh, or doctors available to them and uh, our app can be used by anybody uh, really easily uh, to basically do a first level screening of a lot of patients really quickly and sending them to specialists if they need to. Um, so basically the way it works is uh, all you need is just the iPhone. You can just take a picture of um, someone's eye and we crop to just the pupil through our, our software and then we run our image uh, processing algorithms on it and uh, it gives you a diagnosis of how sure we are that somebody has a mature senile cataract or if their eye is unhealthy or healthy. So we would do an edge map around the, uh, the pupil and we see basically if there are any edges within the center of the pupil or anywhere inside the pupil. And if there are, that tells us that something is wrong with the eye. Our goal was to create a prototype which would be a wearable proof of concept system that will assist visually impaired individuals navigating within a closed environment. So it's not for outdoors, it's for indoor spaces. The indoor positioning works is that we have an RFID reader, this is it, and there are RFID tags around the environment. Right now we have this is one RFID tag, and there are four others uh, right there and along this hallway. In an ideal environment, we'll put more than just five. There will be one at every sign. So that we have a website application for patients and an Android tablet application for the doctors. I, I can log in here with a, an account that I previously made and I'll show you all the functionalities that we have. So the doctor has a personal profile and here we, we have some contact information about himself, telephone, and the doctor is able to change this in the profile. He can uh, add new things and uh, save it to the system. We wanted to build kind of a universal remote control, but instead of using buttons or a menu-based approach, we wanted to do it through gestures. So we have a car, we have a cannon, and then beside the cannon, there's two LEDs. So basically through gesture mapping, each one of these buttons controls a different object, and the touchpad is what you use to draw the gestures on. So for the lights, it's pretty intuitive. If you go up, a light turns on. If you go down, light turns off. Uh, for the car, pretty similarly, if you press and hold up, it turns the motor on, the car goes forward. Going left and right, turn the wheels left and right. And the cannon is again pretty similar to the uh, pretty similar to the car in the sense that left and right turn. Everyone knows like uh, everyone needs Rosie and Blackboard at the Student University of Toronto. And you can imagine with a phone, if you're trying to browse Rosie and Blackboard. Like you have, you'll probably open up Safari and try to load uh, rosie.utron.ca on your phone. If, you know, it's it's a pretty troublesome task. So I'm gonna press OK. Hopefully the Wi-Fi allows me. Yeah, okay, I've established login to Rosie, right? So now let's look, let's see how long we look on the timetable. Okay, here's my timetable along with the conflict. Some people have conflicts, right? Now this is not an image. It's actual. It's an actual timetable pulled from the server. Except we take the HTML and we take away what the user does not need. So that it, you get what exactly you want to see that makes sense for a, a mobile screen. So, depending on the number of robots that are actually in the floor right now, it will basically divide up the area accordingly. And the robots will go to his own respective region and they will do coverage. Right now, we currently have three robots and it's actually trying to cover the square region at the moment. So, based, based on its initial location, it will Based on its initial location, it will basically divide up the area into three equal pieces, and then it will try to do a, like a, a, a coverage as as, uh, as follows. It will basically they start it off here, and then it will try to go around like that, all each. So basically, what we're doing is in our handheld like remote, we have an infrared laser. So that's what we're using to shine at the screen. And then here we have an infrared camera. So our software is able to pick up the location of the infrared, but of course, since it's infrared, we can't see it. Um, and then we track the location of this dot, and then using our software we filter its position. So essentially we're low pass filtering it, we're trying to move, remove the high frequency component which is the jitter, while still being able to track where the, um, the position is roughly, where the user's trying to point. So then we take that filtered position and we convert it to a set of angles that we send to the motors, and then the motors just aim the, uh, the red laser at the target we're trying to indicate.